We have been battered by clouds the last couple of weeks, but today is the day that we get back at it. The target is the Crescent Nebula, and to anyone new to this hobby, they might want to know what is the Crescent Nebula? How old is it? How far away is it? What is it made up of? And most importantly to us astrophotographers, what does it look like? Well, today I'm gonna to answer all of those questions and take a stunning image. I'm Marjan, and you're watching God's Art. The Crescent Nebula, or NGC 6888, is an emission nebula that lies 5,000 light years away from Earth. Discovered by William Herschel just over 300 years ago, it was formed as a direct result of massive stellar winds colliding with slower winds, both ejected from the Wolf Rayet star some 250,000 years ago when it became a red giant. This hot gas moves at speeds of up to 3,000 kilometers per second. The shockwaves have produced a distinct outer shell, which we are going to capture today. The Crescent Nebula is about 26 light years across, which to put into context is about 18 times the size of our solar system. It's quite a dim and small object, so it's difficult to see through a telescope. But being an emission nebula rich in hydrogen alpha, a narrowband filter like the Oplong L Extreme is well suited to this target. It does also help being in a Bortle Class 5 sky, which is as good as it gets really in the UK, because that means that there's less interference from light pollution. We'll also be using my Skywatcher 200 PDS, that 1000 mm focal length will give us high magnification, combined with my ZWO ASI 294MC Pro camera, which we've used to capture the Jellyfish Nebula and the Wizard Nebula, which worked out fantastic. This will all be sitting on my sturdy Skywatcher EQ6R Pro mount, so I'm very confident for tonight. The Nebula rises nice and high throughout the night, so we don't have to shoot through as much of the Earth's atmosphere. This means that we're going to create a clearer and ultimately better final image. But anyway, it's a nice summer's day, so I'd better finish off my gardening before we get started. <laughs> Prince is making some real progress with his training. He doesn't pull as much and he's learning very quickly. So he's slowly teaching him new things and he's picking them up one by one. Ideally, we want to get to a stage where we don't need a lead anymore and he can just sit right by our side. But let's take this one step at a time. But anyway, let's go put him away now and set up for tonight. Prince, down. Good boy, up. Handshake. Good boy. Well done. Okay, so we are now capturing those crescent nebula photons which took 5,000 years to reach us. It's amazing how clear the sky is, so I should be able to carry on the session for the rest of the night, probably to about 4am. This will mean that we might be able to break my record of the longest exposure time that I've got for a target, so we could get to up to maybe 4 hours with this. The weather is good, but the only downside to the summer time is that we start our session so late, so I couldn't start to about 11am today. It means that we can't finish to about 3 or 4am like I said, whereas in the winter time you can start maybe 9pm, then when you're done at 1am it's actually not too bad. But we're just going to have to put it in now and take advantage of this weather. I've had no trouble staying up, it's very still, everything's really peaceful and calm. It's about a 60% illuminated moon, which isn't too bad and we're shooting in our narrowband filter anyway, so we should be able to cut out most of that light. The guiding seems to be going fine as well. I'm really enjoying using multi-star guiding. I feel like it's really improving the tracking ability of the night sky. So it's making my life a lot easier, and these sub-exposures are coming through a lot cleaner. Last time out we shot the Wizard Nebula and I received some really positive comments, so I want to say a big thank you to all of you who provided me the feedback and positivity. It really means a lot to me. I really feel like this channel is making progress, so I want to keep producing great content and improving my images for you. 
it really inspires me to hear positive feedback from you all. A lot of work goes into these videos, so if you did enjoy it, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Let's go outside now and check out these sub exposures. Okay, so I'm gonna keep my voice down now. It's about half 12, so I think everyone's trying to go to sleep. We're gonna do just over four hours worth of sub exposures. So once I've cut out the ones which I don't like, we should have at least three hours worth of usable data. The Crescent Nebula looks a bit weird. It kind of looks like a brain, which is a bit strange. Um, but I feel like it's quite a cool look to it. There's a lot of HA in the region which is popping out in these sub exposures, but there's also a lot of O3 in there as well. So hopefully when I process this, we should be able to see the blues and the reds with each other. We're doing three minute exposures at a gain of 120, binning one by one. We're doing 90 exposures, but most importantly, we're only gonna use the very best data. Doing 90 exposures gives us that flexibility to cut out the ones which we're not sure about. You can see how small the Crescent Nebula really is at 1000 mm focal length, which is pretty high power of magnification. It's still relatively small in the frame. The guiding's going very well, so I'm pleased with how we're tracking the night sky. This means the stars are staying nice and sharp. There's very little wind, it's a very calm day outside and we shouldn't get any clouds. So I'm hoping we can get a full night's worth of imaging. If we do, then we're gonna get a brilliant image tonight.